Hello there, Scott from Wessex Blaze. This is a very fast run through video tips and things for Dusty Pilgrim 1. Um, starting out knife making. Um, so, what I'll do is I'll basically just run through as many quick fire, rapid in your face things, just hints and tips for knife makers on the start from the beginning. Um, if you're going to make a start, get your 01 tool still. If you're in the UK from Cromwell's Cromwell Tools, it's under materials underground flat stock. Um, it comes basically a uniform thickness and comes in sizes that you can uh, choose on the grid of all the, the specs that is going. Just pick some that you're going to work with. What you need to think about before you start very far on is the pin stock for the handles. So that's the holes you're going to drill. Make sure you can get the actual stock. So if you creep around the corner, Mitch, creep around the corner, I know I have a choice of 5mm in steel, 3mm in steel. I have an odd one from um, Sandy, but I know that those 3 8 to 10 mil are very useful as 10 mil. Figure out what stock you can get hold of this cheap to start with before you start drilling holes that you can't match your stock up to later for the pins of the handles. You can end up putting liners on the handles later and that material I use for my templates. When the steel arrives I found the easiest thing to use is Tipex pen. Okay, It goes on really easy with a good squeeze. It doesn't rub off as readily when you put it in the water when you cut in it, it just works out a lot easier for cutting your shapes out don't even think of doing anything unless you've got goggles you got a mask you got ear defenders I got a set gray up blue up there with me orange if you're gonna start doing any tasks in a workshop, anybody who does it without the goggles, without the mask, without the ear fenders, without the gloves, is a fool. Seriously, it, eye injuries, lung inhalation, the noise, the spark, eventually you'll come a cropper. So this is the first thing you should start getting. You're not gonna do anything crazy in here unless you've got all the proper PPE, which is personal protective equipment. So, you've got your metal and you've drawn it out. What I found to be far more reliable and quicker is using Rhodius discs. I buy them in the UK from Tool Station, and they're about, about 11 pound for 10 or something. They last a lot longer, and because they're so thin, they don't remove much material, so they get through quicker. I've got loads of grinding discs, but what I'm finding is the grinder is better if you use a belt grinder. For cutting, that's the fastest way of doing it. Rhodius discs. When you're actually thinking about the grinder, the best one I go for, I was always told, and when I, as soon as I saw a chance of getting one, I got one. It took me three years, but get yourself a Clark, because apparently they're a bit tougher than the Axminsters and Ryobis and all the other little 1x30s. It's a Clark, it's a 1x30, so you've got a 1 inch by 30 inch belt, 30 inches around, 1 inch wide, and you've got a little whizzy thing on the side there of a little table. Don't use that much, but that with ceramic belts, which in England, all these here, Mitch, I can get from Tyler Hardware. A previous vid from a couple of days ago was the address, the ceramic belts means that you can shape your blade a lot faster than using Alox. Now they do look very similar. There's aluminium oxide belts. When I bought these clearance, the price was worth the performance. But when you start really start chunking them out, ceramic is the way to go, and that's the end of it. They're, they're three or four pound a belt, but you can really chew the material off. You might have a mask, but what's great, I've got a good old crappy Hoover. When you hear it, 
that's where it is. I've got a big flex, and wherever it needs to go, be around there, or a voltage to my 1x30, that's on just to save the crap building up on your bench and it will actually catch even less than we would have had a work mask anyway so a good old hoover will be good when you've shaped it out and drilled it out you end up struggling if you haven't got a pillar drill or a bench drill I'm lucky over this side this is my previous firm uh, the boss, Colin, used to use this as an arbor press and so it was going for nothing and he gave it to me. My dad had it for a few years. You need that on the slowest speed but you need, if I go on the about here, cobalt drill bits. Now I get them in the UK from tool station again. They cost a lot more but with lube Got some funky fluid here this is the lubrication for the harder drill bit it's not high speed steel okay it's not titanium nitride coating it's cobalt and it'll go through the annealed tool steel so much easier and it'll last a lot longer and leave a far better hole for your pins later on so cobalt drill bits and the difference between using a pistol drill when I say pistol drill that's a pistol drill. This is a bench drill around here on the slowest speed. Mine's set up for using lever on a 2mm all the time, but I'm very, very, very lucky. Funky Prepper gave me this beast. So he's my slow drill, and this does everything above a 3mm because the chuck is 3 to 16 mils. That is 0 to 13. So he's always got a 2 in and this does all my big drills it's the amount of application you can get on the drill bit on a nice stable bottom and a work clamp there I think you can get these from Axminster they go through the slots in the base I got one myself I use these at work all the time they're really good you've got to adjust the back and then you clamp that down it's basically vice grips on a stand and these are about 11 quid really worth it if you can get all of them um, so you've drilled it you've cut it you've shaped it you've done the bevels now what I found is for doing the bevels which are these bits on the knife can you see that Mitch is it showing up the bevels there yep okay what I've done is I went on my circular saw at work and then lunch break and I've cut eight degrees on the saw and the blade, so he's impromptu, the blade sits in there to go on a flat base on the sander. So that goes there, okay, and it's canted towards the belt 8 degrees. So if I go here, that goes there, there's your 8 degrees with that sat on there. I made up a block, it's an 8, I've got a 7, 8, a 9 and a 10 degree set of blocks. So there's 7, 8, a 9, and that's my 10. You can do it freehand, but it makes it so much neater having a bevel. If you can get a proper beast grinder, let me step on the quench tank, um, Downland Engineering, if, you, if you've got the cash, Downland Engineering do a 2x72, so this belt goes a horrendous amount, just a huge great thing, and you get yourself a digital inclinometer, it looks like that, so you turn it on and you get your readout, you put it on there, zero it at zero degrees, and then you can adjust this, this section and, and give you the bevels that way. It's a far more expensive way of doing it but as proved from Doberman knives, dirty room knives, every other knife maker has ever got anywhere 
when you get to that 2x72 everything starts opening up so starter you get a little 1x30 but once you get that big grinder you're really in business once you've done your blade shaping and you're drilling you're ready for heat treat I personally wouldn't grind it to a fine edge for heat treat I'd leave it a millimeter wide and then take the rest off later now I've got and I've just done a few vids on it a gas forge now all that is if you look down there Mitch down here is a thumping great propane bottle okay big propane bottle and um, it's I've turned it off now that's off that's off and you've got an isolator tap on top of there as well and uh, you just get these from Clark they're about I don't know 20 30 quid for a set of torches and then you need your um, regulator and a hose pipe now I've done 20 heat treats on that so far and I haven't noticed a lot in pressure so it for me is a very easy and it's still portable I could take it outside if I had to the kiln shelves that I'm using you could replicate with an old steel cylinder or or some something made out of uh, fire brick you can you can cobble it all together so you've allowed the heat to not escape you've contained it in something if you did a metal box on its own you'll heat the air which heats the box which dissipates away you'll be very hard pushed to get a decent heat treat in it the heat will keep leaking away these ceramic shelves kiln shelves keep the heat in a lot better for a quench tank I've had this one made up um, it only cost me 20 25 quid um, a squarish base he seam welded around with a MIG welder sort of a hundred by hundred and he put some drop down handles on it as well he could have painted it but I think was it me and Jazz or me and you went and Mitch we just sprayed it juicy yellow just to sort of do our own little way that's old engine oil you can use vegetable oil or olive oil and it give you a cleaner scale on the outside of your knife when you heat tree in I'm using an old coat hanger that goes through the lanyard hole it gets up to a mid orange color the magnets are the clue that you're at about the right temperature what you want is demagnetic but not 20 degrees more than that you, you end up 20 degrees more than demagnetic your heat treat has problems I don't know what I don't know why but I just make sure it's just demagnetic and then you go into your oil you haven't got to shake it about and move it about and clang it or anything it just goes in the oil you should have a bit of a hiss a bit of a bubble um, a few small licky flames but you don't want a ranging rig fire after a few seconds you should be able to blow it out so you haven't heated it ridiculously it's just a mid orange color when you take it out that's the point when your file ready to go should just skip off the edge of the blade you know you know when you do metal work in school or whatever and the file actually starts removing metal it's harder than that it's as hard as the file and they're just action against each other and there's no scuff marks on your blade still now that's the first part of the heat tree there's another part and some people might forget that you've got to temper it back now tempering is something that can be used in, in many things glass is tempered metal is tempered you've got a hard brittle glass like file for a knife at the moment it's gone in there and it's about, about as hard as it'll ever get what you need to do is draw the brittleness out of it now how you do that is degrease it sneak it in the house oven at 250 degrees for one hour or two hours depending on the rock well you want from the spec sheet on the side of your steel you can get your 57 or your 56 rock well due to the temper cycle afterwards so you degrease it put it in the oven a good hour ours is out at 8 15 it's now 7 30 so in 45 minutes what I'll do is I open the door 
you can use oven gloves now because you're on it at 250 degrees you take it out and I plunge it in water just tch, 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 and that's it done and I've I managed to bolt four together three together and two well, use the bolts a minute so I've just gone through the lanyard it's not really a, a heat treat thing where a really even temperature has to be throughout and the flame and everything it's just at 250 degrees and I'm gonna have three bolted together bundles of blades into the sink dirty old wash nut water is fine clean the sink right out because obviously your missus doesn't want to do the broccoli and the vegetables but in the same sink you've done your tempering in and then what you're ready to do at this stage is get the black scale off now in my personal journey through knives it could be weeks before I do from one stage to another I need to give my clues at what stage I haven't got much wall space I can get to to have a board here we go look. to have a board that's got cut uh, drilled heat treat tempered I haven't got that so when I pick this up by looking at it I know I've still got the scale on there this is heat treated but I've cleaned it up so I, I know that this is heat treated it's been tempered but if I clean that there unless I start hitting it or scratching it I wouldn't know whether it was cut ground drilled and not heat treated unless I start scratching it so give yourself a clue if you if you put stuff down or better still if you've got wall space have it organized and hang them up on pin nails and if you've got a bit of room mask and tape on for the person who's it is so if Bob Smith had ordered one of your blades have it written on there if you can in permanent marker or tip X or mask and tape and stick it on to hang it up because if you're doing it part time you ain't going to remember the next time you come out you see what I mean? Once you take it off and you've cleaned the scale off from the temper, you can put your handles on. And this is where basically you just glue on pieces of wood and you put pins through the handles. So the pin goes through there, wood goes either side. Now, wood comes in, if you're lucky. You get you get pre-cut blank pieces of wood like this. At the moment, this is rosewood, so it looks like a guitar neck. The average guitar neck is a rosewood fretboard. That will be cut in half. Again, I'm lucky because I've been around a while. Over in this corner, I've got a metal cutting bandsaw. Now, the metal cutting bandsaw compared with a wood cutting bandsaw the speeds are different the average hobby bandsaw unless it says metal cutting it won't be it'll be a fast thing with bugger all torque what you need is a slow metal cutting bandsaw and the reason is this you can cut your blanks out with a metal cutting bandsaw you can cut your wood out with a metal cutting bandsaw with a hobby bandsaw you can only cut wood and plastics it's going to smash itself to pieces because it's too damn fast to cut your nail tool steel my blade that's in there Shall I go in there Mitch the actual blade on mine is bimetal I haven't got a, just a carbon steel bandsaw blade this one's bimetal so it's on the fastest of the three speeds but it's as a metal cutting bandsaw this will cut everything steel this will cut aluminium, this will cut your fiber liners, this will cut your hardwoods, it will cut your pin stock, it will cut everything. One tool does everything and it will do it really well. Again, my stuff ends up as it's Clark everything. In England, it just ends up as the firm we're doing. So, if you buy your hardwood blocks, your scales in these blocks, to cut that down through the middle, you could get a fret saw, which is a very small tabletop one and you just push it through and cut it in half don't trust this cut you've done use the machine sides to go onto your wood like that and then just it's a case of matching up the holes that you've done with the pins and 
epoxy resin just two part epoxy and all you're doing is you're using a little 1x30 grinder to shape everything out okay and then you're going to get your edge now when you do the grinding you do one pass and you quench in the water so over this side I've got a long tank it's just a big sort of plastic tub it'll go in there because the last thing you want to do now it's been heat treated now it's been tempered don't screw up the heat treat you'll know you screwed it up because you'll get a rainbow color you'll get anything from a straw yellow to a blue okay for those who are really good with torches you can actually temper using the colors if you know what you're doing but personally if you start in just hurl it in the oven all right so then you get yourself to an edge there's a complete black art of which grind or geometry you're going to do be it concave convex flat grind the actual terminal bevel is another lesson entirely but basically once you get a cutting edge off the belt what you need to do is get the burr off and that is just hard graft on a strop now I've got a big lump of wood with a piece of lever and put chromium oxide. This is for razors, not razors. Chrome oxide and a bit of engine oil and you just go against what you think. When you sharpen on a stone, you go that way. So if you've got a stone, there's a, there's a cover. Obviously, you know, the little sharpening stones that goes in these pads, you go that way on the blade edge with a strop you must go the other way so what you're doing is if you were looking at that under a microscope what's happening is, is you've got an edge and it's got a big burr on the edge and you're gradually gradually lipping it and folding it and taking that burr off and you end up with a really clean neat working edge so what you hopefully at the end of that you'll have your blade out of 01 tool still some forge or some description but the kit I would invest in first up is get yourself a small bench drill so something along the size of this thing here in the corner okay but put it on a slow speed use cobalt bits and the most versatile little bugger going the 1x30 mini sander and get ceramic belts basically in a nutshell that's it but don't even begin to do stuff in the garage unless you've got your goggles your mask your ear defenders and gloves because no kidding you'll be off work sick you'll get that stuff in your lungs you'll get stuff in your eye and, and you'll be in a mess so I hope that helps Dusty Pilgrim 1 Scott from West Explave thanks much on the filming see you on the next one